Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this psychiatry video, we're going to be talking about Rett syndrome. Now, this is a very high yield topic to remember. It might show up on your boards, but don't worry. It's a very quick video. It's a very simple topic, and there's not much you need to know other than the stuff we're going to go through. So with that being said, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. We're going to be posting new videos uh, quite regularly from now on. So, General symptoms. Rett syndrome is a rare non-inherited uh, genetic neurological disorder that occurs mainly in girls. In fact, I don't know why I put mainly. It only occurs in girls. We're going we're gonna to talk about that in a second. But the three things you have to take away from this first sentence is, number one, it is a rare disorder. Number two, it is not inherited, okay, and that's really important. And number three, it only occurs in girls. And that's a big giveaway because Rett syndrome is very similar to autism. The way I like to think about it is it, it presents kind of like, like autism around the same age, um, but it's slightly dif different. So one main difference is the fact that it mainly occurs in girls. Now, autism, like if you guys have seen our autism spectrum disorders video, it may it primarily occurs in males. Of course, there are females who are autistic, but it mainly occurs in males. And as far as the USMLE step one is going to be concerned, the vignettes that you're going to be presented with, it's usually going to be a male patient around three, two to five years old. Um, when it comes to Rett syndrome, it's always going to be a female. So there's going to be a sole onset of symptoms in Rett syndrome, and it starts around one to two years of age. Again, very similar to autism. So just to uh, drill that home a little bit for you guys, we're going to write Rett syndrome is very similar to autism. And uh, one of the main differences is RET is females and autism is males. Now, the hallmark is a regression of cognitive or motor skills. What that means is maybe they hit those developmental milestones around two years old, like they started walking and they started to talk, but then they start regressing. They start going backwards, right? Um, and the way it'll present in a clinical setting, it's most likely going to be a one or two year old child presenting with their parents and the parents are going to say, you know, the patient was walking, my child was walking a few months ago and now he, he or she, uh, sorry, she has started crawling only. She stopped walking. She's not responding. She's not talking anymore. And this shows a regression of cognitive and motor or motor skills. Now, you do need to know the genetics behind Rett syndrome. But again, it's very simple. And the high yield stuff that we're going to go through is going to be pretty straightforward for you guys to remember. So it happens primarily in girls. Okay. And again, I don't know why I wrote primarily. It only happens in girls because it is fatal in males. Oh, no. Let's do a oh, no face right here. Oh, no. Oh no. All right. So it's a X-link dominant disorder. And that's why it is fatal in males because girls are XX, males are XY. So if one X gets knocked out, the male gets knocked out. But if a female gets one X knocked out, oh, that's not smart. Let's do this. Then she still has a second X chromosome to take over the place. Anyways, uh, I'm just simplifying it for you guys, but just keep in mind it's X-link dominant uh, and it's fatal in males and it's caused by mutation in the MECP2 gene. So I'm just going to box this for you guys. Okay, every time um, I write HY next to, it means it's high yield. Okay, and if I write HYAF, it means it's high yield as fuck. So <laughs> uh, this is going to be a missense or frame shift or nonsense mutation. This is not that important. What is important is that the MECP2 gene is significantly expressed within the brain. Um, that's the main reason why they start having regression of cognitive and motor skills. 99% of these uh, these issues, these syndromes are sporadic gene mutations, meaning they always happen sporadically, and these mutations can again be missense, frame shift, or nonsense mutations. 
Now, when it comes to clinical manifestation and treatment, we talked a little bit about it, but it's going to be classically a two-year-old female that presents with the parents, and they're going to say, my, my, my daughter is, having, uh, is going backwards. She's developing backwards, kind of like Benjamin Button disease. Um, so they're going to have deceleration of head growth. They're going to have loss of purposeful hand skills. Uh, they're going to have gait and motor abnormalities. And keep in mind, around two years old, the child starts, you know, walking. So they may start going backwards from there. They may have loss of spoken language. At two years old, they should be speaking at about a two-word sentence, you know, uh, two, two phrase sentences. So they also will have stereotypic hand mo movements like hand to mouth licking and grabbing clothing and hair, uh, something a child, a very young baby does. And the treatment is simply therapy and assistance. Just like autism, there is no treatment and you can only mitigate the negative effects by assistance and physical therapy and occupational therapy. But even then, it's to a certain limit. Um, and with that being said, that's all we got today. Hopefully this was informative. Hopefully this helped you understand Rett syndrome. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.